Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope we're all having a great weekend. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling 29th of November 2015. So again, the fact you're listening to this means you've already understand you accept all the scores disclaimers, understanding that we're just performing some technical analysis in a learning context for educational purposes only. So what's happening here? We're going into a very busy week. Again, a lot of steady flow of medium and high importance data throughout the week. On Monday, we've got a lot of uh, medium stuff out of... Uh, Europe, you know, with German retail sales, the German CPI, we've got stuff out of the UK, we've got current account out of Canada, we got the Chicago PMI, pending home sales out of the US. So fairly steady a stream of stuff coming out. On Tuesday, we got all those PMIs out of China. We got a cash date rate with the RBA decision. So that's going to be very, very diff- uh, interesting on Tuesday with uh, bank stress test results out of the UK. We've got a bunch of some... Uh, um, Swiss data, we've got some Europe data, we got a uh, Carney on deck, we've got uh, manufacturing PMI out of the UK, we got another GDT out of New Zealand, we got the GDP out of Canada, we got ISM. So again, out of the US, very, very busy. Wednesday, as things start to heat up and we get ready for Super Mario to hit the dance floor on Thursday, on Tuesday, we've got Governor uh, Stevens out of the RBA again, we got GDP out of Australia, we've got, you know, that construction PMI out of the UK, we got all those CPIs out of Europe. We've got ADP out of the US. Uh, we got a rate statement out of Canada. We've got crude oil inventories. We've got Yellen speaking. Uh, so again, very interesting day. Thursday, as we said, the big event, right? We've got trade balance out of Australia. We got service PMI out of the UK. We got Super Mario on deck, right? It's all about the ECB next week. But don't forget that as memory serves, we've got that OPEC meeting on Friday. But on top of that, very important on Friday, not only do we have an unemployment change in the trade balance, out of Canada, but we got the non-farm payroll, which I believe is the last non-farm before the FOMC meeting. So again, very, very interesting week, okay? So if you look at the charts, what I wanted to do is just look at some blank charts for the hell of it. We do this every once in a while. So on the ES, what we said is basically, it looks like the market is in a, a slow drift higher. We talked about the fact that we would not, not huge fans of trying to short a holiday market, really, even though we expect the velocity of the move to come to the downside, we had no interest in trying to get short last week, you know, and, and indeed the market held a little bit of a, a bid tone all week. So, you know, it does look like the market, maybe if it fails, it has to fail from a higher level, most likely all going to be about that FOMC. So again, we, we're clearly, uh, we have a lot of resistance here. And, and I think, you know, everybody's uh, is stuck in a, in a similar position, right? You know, and that position means is hey, there's a massive wall here. We'll have to see what happened if the Fed raise, raises rates or not. If we break outside of this level, then there's clear chance of a lot of stops getting hit, a lot of panic and and a flush to the upside. But if this doesn't get hit, you know, we could see a fairly decent correction, right? And where would that decent correction be? Well, you know, there's no reason why it can't come back all the way into those lows. But even if you look at it on something like on a weekly, right? And you put something low 100 and 200 DMA, you know, there's no reason why this could, you know, it could be a healthy retracement all the back, back down into these uh, 118s, right? So, uh, the problem is, I suspect, is that a lot of people are just either going to look stupid talking about this because, you know, it's, it's just saying, well, you know, this could stall here. If it pops, it's going to rip. And if it doesn't, it could really do- drop, right? Well, and everybody's going to say, well, what, what's, what good is that analysis going to do? And I think bottom line is that, that that's where we are right? That's where we are. The market uh, looks like it's got some kind of a bid tone. If you look at specific names, it doesn't look like it's extremely healthy. It looks like it would be, it would make sense to see some kind of retracement. Everybody's waiting for this FOMC. Are they going to raise rates or not? So there's just an awful lot of uncertainty, you know, and, and again, people shouldn't be surprised because it's not always clear. It's not an always easy call. And, you know, it reflects the current geopolitical um, situation. It reflects the, the current Current economic situation. It reflects the current situation with you know all the questions on what to do with this uh, so-called recovery, if anything. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. And uh, and what I would say is I would just remain flexible, right? And and the best way, as far as we're concerned, to remain fe- flexible is to say, well, what 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 do we know or what do we see? Well, basically, right. One thing which is clear is that there is a wall. 
defending here. If the Fed actually raises rates, well, you'd expect to see some kind of a possible sell-off, right? Um, if the market can't get traction above that level, you'll expect to see some kind of a sell-off, right? What would a decent level to be? Well, you know, the first support is probably going to be around that first uh, this that dip that got bought recently, right? So that would be a move back into around that uh, 2000 mark. Then that will likely is going likely to be some kind of a bull bear line for either a pop or a drop, right? And on the way to this whole support zone, right, which would probably and has probably been weakened on a third test, we'd expect the market to try and come down somewhere around, you know, some find some base around the support that's 200. Um, you know, so that's where we are. Is it, is it a uh, is there a very clear trading plan? I don't think so here. I think as far as at least we're concerned, it's uh, we're not um, expensive enough to sell yet. It probably could be interesting to try and build some kind of shorts here, but probably expect this to fail from a higher level. And is this cheap enough to buy? Definitely not cheap enough to buy, right, as far as we're concerned. So the levels that we're interested in, those highs, on any kind of weakness, you know, this 100 and then the 200, you know, from a broad, broader uh, perspective. Then, of course, from a shorter term perspective, there are some other intraday trading opportunities, but those are the main things we're uh, focusing on on the ES. Now, another interesting thing also because of all the data that's coming down is going to be uh, is Canada, right? Uh, what's going on on Canada. So we talked about the fact that it looked like we had some kind of bottoming here. Here we're back on a, uh, on a daily chart, right? And if you put on these two moving averages, you know, just the 100, 200, just to help people have a bit of a direction. What we had been discussing is that as far as we're concerned, we're putting on some kind of a, a bottom here. We expected this to hold and we expected price to rotate back into the 100 DMA. At this point, we expected the 100 DMA to be pivotal for Momo and Flows. So what we would expect through the uh, rate decision, right, uh, this week through the data points is that if market can have daily close below that 100 DMA, then it could take a stab to move back down towards these lows. But the way this is trading, we'd expect it to try and continue above. And we expect to this area to see a lot of fighting and possibly set the stage for the next move back up towards this 200 DMA where we'll probably see an awful lot of uh, sellers which is also broadly speaking coming in line with this all this previous support that now should act as resistance so we, we, we suspect that that looks like a decent confluence zone so right now the areas where we would be more interested in doing business from a longer term perspective is either into that 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 100 or back towards these lows right here we're not extremely interested in doing a lot an awful lot of business at mid-range but again this just seems to be that you know it's looking for direction here in this pivotal level for either rotation higher or a move back lower but so far fairly 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 decent action and it's all going to be about how we behave around this level in terms of another uh, chart that's linked uh, to commodities you know what's happening on crude we've got that OPEC meeting is going to be very interesting is the CAD chart right so it looks like CAD is still struggling at those highs we had a very interesting little uh, reversal candle here the other day and we sold off hard from that level now it looks like the market is trying to hold this area and this which is pretty much you know these 3370s and this will likely be the bull bear line for the week either for a rotation back up into those highs or for a bigger correction lower if you look at it from the daily perspective again it, you know no big uh, no big surprises we're holding back towards these highs uh, this is probably you know linked into those lows that are trying to form on crude right and especially expect you know if we keep on getting uh, some kind of positive messages out of uh, out of OPEC or something which which is more um, at least some more stability or possible pop on on crude you'd expect this to to get sold, where would you expect this to try and take a quick stab at? Well, most likely we'd expect it to come right back down 
towards these 132s towards this 100 and then that will likely be the next pivotal zone for either uh, rotation back down or another step back at those highs so we expect that 100 from a bigger perspective to be the pivotal level so call this almost like mid low range and we're hovering here at these highs and again market will be very very tempted to take out some stops and cause some more pain above those highs but it's really all about follow through not about the level being broken or not remember especially in the holiday market the lower lower uh, lower liquidity chop markets it's where it's not so much about a specific level being pierced or not it's uh we prefer to look at daily closes above or below those specific levels right it's about follow through it's about continuation at key areas but clearly this is a very interesting zone on cat so not an awful lot has changed from um, what we discussed uh, cable here holding very very heavy right we discussed the fact that as long as it kept on closing below those uh, those areas we had the other chart that's on the blog it's fairly uh, classic downside action here it's trying to hold this low right now if you look at it from a daily perspective right you know it's just being uh, it keeps on getting sold and, and this is a key area this is an area where it's found support uh, before you can see this whole zone here to uh, to the left right here you know market had based here before it's, it's a pretty interesting area now we'll have to see how we go into the week right and if you also you know if you look at it in terms of the daily and you have try and put two two of those moving averages on on the chart you see that clearly to the upside there there's clearly a big zone that will attract that is coming in around those 153s that's going to be resistance that's where we got sold very very hard and right here this is probably you know base support for the week so what you want to look at going into the beginning of the week is how do we behave at this level right if we can't break below and hold below this level quick then most likely what would you expect into all these data all these uh, all this event risk coming up you'll probably expect price to try and bounce a little bit either a little shallow bounce that's going to get sold hard or maybe even a if it's a bigger bounce then maybe you'll see these uh, these two moving averages up here starting to starting to attract however if we go into the week here and we hold very very quickly below and we start to get some traction well this could accelerate quite aggressively now where would that accelerate to well there's a lot of different you know i think different people will be looking at uh different things i'm not a huge fan of this level but i suspect if you look at this whole move here you'll see a lot of people trying to uh will be talking about these 4850s right 78.6 of that move uh you'll probably see A lot of people talking about the 123 of this move here that got sold on the little uh, uh, move back down off these levels spike moving averages held they'll be looking at the 123 so you see you've got a lot of uh, confluence areas here right uh, you know you can pick pick your level but broadly speaking you know i would expect something to you know around this this uh, 149 148.50 that kind of area to attract early in the week but this is really the big uh, bull bear line going into the week if it can get traction early then expect this to try and take a pretty violent step back down if not you know look for a little bit of a bounce possibly into the 152s if not all the way even into the 153s for a move back higher but you'll probably expect the market to get sold there this is the big bull bear line going into the week again a lot of uh, data out of cable i haven't been a huge fan of trading cable apart from some of the bigger shorts even intraday i think the much more interesting trades have been trying to play those uh squeezes back up to euro gpb if you're interested on the chart it's on the blog we discussed that a lot last week in the last weekly um sunday video where we thought the most interesting opportunity is to try and play for squeezes on euro gpb but you know uh, everybody picks their own charts uh what's happening on euro here so euro we're we're pressing these lows um, very very choppy um 
and heavy, you're seeing that we're extending off these uh, two, uh, two moving averages that we've been using today just to help people with some context, which are both coming in around the 109 mark, right? Now, the big question is, is Draghi going to deliver? Is Draghi not going to deliver? Now, I think the overriding theme is um, there's there are always a couple of options, right? One is that the mar you know Draghi uh, over delivers, Draghi under delivers, or he's somewhere in the middle, right? So the question is, what could possibly happen on the release or through the release? So I, I suspect we can agree that if he uh, under delivers, you'll probably see Euro pop. If he's uh, somewhere in the middle, you'll probably see some profit taking. You'll see Euro pop, and if he over delivers, well, you'll probably see euro drop, but you might also see an awful lot of profit taking into that into that move, right? Because everything's priced in, a lot is priced in, pretty much nothing's not priced in at this point. So if you think if you got three possible options, three possible outcomes, as much as this may not be a very uh, popular way of looking at it, um, chances are that you know you probably everything's priced in and there's a lot more chance that the market is disappointing than that the more market is super happy with him over delivering right even though that could happen so if you look at it that way i would deduce or i would deduct that it's not um you know a, a very uh, an ideal thing to start to get aggressively short here opening new shorts if anything you're looking to manage opening sh open shorts or you're looking to maybe try and tactically play the upside now again even if this pops you you'd expect everybody lined up to sell uh sell uh you know any kind of pop so i don't think the squeeze unless he completely under delivers is going to be massive so going into the week what are we looking at well you've got these lows that are clearly going to be attraction for the pain trade you know that you've got that 104 that was def defended but this is all a base support if we start to pop well you got those two moving averages coming in line around that 109 here uh which is also you know those two previous uh, supports that now should act as resistance right if you're looking at it in terms of the uh, fib of this most recent move you've got that coming in at 107 but you know i'd expect people are lined up all over the place to sell this the bigger levels i would suspect are going to be the 108 right and then those two moving averages those are coming into uh, the uh, the the 109 109 area now if we're going to look at this because i know a lot of people have been asking about uh, on a shorter time frame uh, you can see that basically what's happening is that the market keeps on getting sold aggressively but to a certain extent you know it, it's not really getting um the way i'm looking at it at least as you see it's not really getting an awful lot of traction at lows it's not attracting new sellers at lows where it's attracting sellers is you see all these wicks it's attracting sellers on all the bounces right so as we said there's probably people are just lined up to to whack this on every little pop so what would that um imply or suggest is that you it's a tricky one again i don't want to sound boring but to try and chase this at, at lows you if you're if you're looking to sell you're probably going to get much nicer areas and much much nicer momo to sell rallies rather than try to sell breaks sell lows now as a general fact we don't like selling lows or buying highs we're not a huge fan of those kind of break trades but even here you know the market's showing you that you know you can get a better price if you wait for the rotations higher and then to smack it down from there so you know even here you know don't get aggressive at lows let it come to you and as we said you know you can even look at the at the areas you know the most recent area that's been sold 106s then you've got those sellers coming into the 107s then you've got those like you know pretty much every round number to the upside will find people lined up to sell but just keep that in mind just keep that boring reminder you know what could come out that's not priced in and you know shorts will likely want to take some profits even if that means to reload so i'd just be a bit cautious about getting too aggressive at at, at lows on euro but again i think it's going to be a very interesting week there's an awful lot shaping up not 
that much has changed on the charts if you're interested in some other charts that are on the blog if not you can always hit me up on twitter i'm more than happy to post any chart we've got marked and ready to go on the blog if anybody wants it okay so thanks for listening and as always guys have an awesome week uh may it be uh interesting profitable and safe for everybody have a great one and see you around on twitter for london open bye bye guys